Today we're going to talk all about how to change your add node rod on your hot water heater for your RV. Now, if you don't know what an add node rod is, I'm about to tell you. But I'm not going to get all scientific -y on you, if scientific -y is a word. But so the add node rod is this is the add node rod. It goes into your hot water heater and basically it attracts the elements in the water that will cause corrosion and it will corrode this rod versus corroding the inside of your tank on your hot water heater. Uh, you should change these. Well, you should check them at least once a year and change them when they're 75% degraded. So we're about to open ours up and see how degraded it is, but we're gonna change ours today regardless, just to show you how to do it. First thing you're gonna wanna do is open this up. Take that off of there, lift that off, and that's gonna give you access to where your add node rod is. The add node rod is screwed into right here. Next, you're gonna to want to shut off your hot water heater from the outside and shut off your hot water heater from the inside. Once your hot water heater is turned off on the outside and on the inside, the next thing you're going to want to do is just hang out for a little while because you don't want that water to cool off before you take that add node rod out. As soon as you do that, all that water is going to come out. And right now it's very, very hot. So hang out for a little bit and then we'll get to the good stuff. All right, while we're waiting for the hot water to cool off so we can take the old add node rod out, I'm going to talk about what kind of stuff you're going to need for this very simple project. First of all, obviously you're going to need your new add node rod. You're going to need some kind of a either a socket wrench or a breaker bar. The next thing that you're going to need is an extension for your breaker bar. Uh, I think a three inch would probably be long enough. This is a five inch. And then you're going to need a one and one sixteenth socket because that's the size of the add node rod that you're going to be taking off and the size of the new one that you're going to be putting on. You're also going to need some plumber's tape to seal the threads of the new add node rod before it goes in to make sure that you don't have any leaks. All this stuff you can get pretty cheap at your local hardware store other than the add node rod. The add node rod you can get on Amazon or Home Depot, any place that carries the RV stuff and these are about 10 to 12 bucks depending on where you get it. But all the, uh, the plumber's tape and the tools you can get at any hardware store, Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, anywhere there. Or you can get it, of course, on Amazon because you can get anything on Amazon. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come outside, I'm going to cut off the water supply to the RV because when I take that add node rod out, it's going to keep continuing to try to fill up that hot water heater. So I have to have the water supply turned off. So if you're on your water pump, make sure your water pump's turned off. And if you're on city water, make sure your city water is turned off. So, or else the water just keep flowing uh, through your hot water heater as you're trying to replace the add node rod. Once I have the city water or my water supply turned off, I come back inside and release the pressure on the hot and the cold water. All right, time to take out the old add node rod and see what she looks like. Pretty nasty. Make sure you let the hot water heater drain completely. Another thing that you can do while the water's still coming out, you still got some pressure of the water coming out, you can take like an old toothbrush and kind of get in here around where the edges are to kind of get some of that old uh, plumber's tape and uh, some of the old corrosion out there. And as you're scrubbing, that water's still pushing that out because if you scrub it after the water's already expelled, you got no water pressures left in there to push all that the rest of the corrosion that you just scrubbed out, if that makes sense. Well, here you can see the difference between the old add node rod and the new add node rod. Um, I would guess this one's about 50% degraded. You're supposed to change them when they're about 75% degraded, but like I said, we're gonna go ahead and change ours today anyway, since we already had it out. It's a good opportunity to do it. The next uh, thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add, we're gonna add plumber's tape to the threads of the new add node rod. And the way you do that is you just simply put that over the threads 
stretch it a little bit so that the plumber's tape gets in between the threads of the new rod. You want to make sure all the threads are covered. This is going to prevent any water from leaking through those threads and getting out. And then you just tear that off. And now your new adnode rod is covered. The next thing you're going to want to do is dry this area up because um, when you turn the when you put the new adnode rod in and you turn the water on, it's going to refill your hot water heater. You've got to make sure this is dry so that you can tell if there's any leaks. If you leave all this wet and then you have a leak, you won't be able to tell it. So I'm going to dry this up real quick and then we'll put in the new adnode rod. Here's another tip. Um, make sure you ask your wife which towels are okay to use. <laughs> if you use the good towels, you might be in the dog house tonight. <laughs> Alright, we're clean, we're dry, and we're ready for the new adnode rod. Now you're going to want to make sure that you get these threads lined up perfectly because if you get these threads wrong and you screw up the threads on the actual hot water heater itself, it could run the whole hot water heater just by screwing up those threads because they will never be intact again and it will always leak and cause you problems. So you got to make sure you get this thing in straight and do it right the first time. A good way to tell if you're not in straight is if like, as soon as you start threading it in, you're meeting resistance. If you're meeting any resistance at all, it's not good. If it threads on a little ways, like a quarter of an inch or so, and then you start meeting resistance, it's probably lined up correctly. There was a little bit of moisture that came back out. So I'm going to tighten this on. I'll dry it up again real good. Then we'll turn our water back on. All right, she's on. So let's turn on the water and see if she's going to leak. Now when I turn the city water back on, you can come over to the hose and you can hear water running through here. The reason you can hear that is because it's filling up the hot water tank. Normally when you turn on city water to your RV, you'll hear a little bit go and then it'll stop. That's because it's just, it's just filling the air in the lines of where the, uh, the pressure is from the sinks and stuff. But since this is continuously still running, that tells me that the hot water tank is not yet full. Once you stop hearing this flow through this to your city water connection, that means your hot water tank is full. And then you can go over and check to make sure you don't have any leaks. All right, so over here on the city water connection, you don't hear that anymore. That means everything is full. The hot water tank is full. Everything's pressurized. So I come over here and I can see it's all still dry. That means everything's good and it's all good to go. So now what I can do is I can turn on the hot water heater uh, from the outside and then I'll turn it back on on the inside. Cover back on. Well, that's it. That's how to replace the adnode rod on your suburban hot water tank on your RV. And um, I know this looks really bad, but it's actually not. It's only about half gone. And uh, a $12 part, like an adnode rod, can save you several hundred dollars just in the cost of replacing your hot water tank. That doesn't even count the labor that it costs. Uh, so it's good to check these at least annually and replace them when they're 75% gone. Um, but if you take it off and it's 50% gone, I mean, you might as well go ahead and change it anyway. It's a $12 part and it only takes a few minutes. Uh, it takes a little longer if you're recording it for YouTube, but uh, just actually regularly doing it, 10 to 15 minute job. And it was a beautiful day out today, so it was a perfect day to do it anyway. The key and the biggest, the biggest tip of all is using the correct towel. Because Leslie will kill me if I use a good towel. She's over there laughing. <laughs> we hope this video helped you change your adnode rod if you didn't already know how to do that. And if you did already know how to do it, I hope you enjoyed watching it anyway. Like we do at the end of all of our videos, we're going to honor a fallen hero. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.